Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Mahindra Bolero City Pickup. This is the extra strong 1.5T variant. This is also known as the salesman. You know why? Because it has all the information on the outside that it's sort of a salesman of its own. Any which way, straight away we are going to be opening the hood and with my pinky finger I'm going to try. It's not going to happen but yeah, there you go. So, no hydraulic struts, but no insulation there. This one really needs it. There's the engine, it's extremely noisy. Of course, it has to be because this is obviously for commercial use and everything makes a lot of sound, including the engine, of course. Now, the thing is, this vehicle gets leaf springs all around and there are four variants on offer. Two are for the extra strong and two are for the extra long. Strong means the payload capacity is higher and long means the loading bay is longer. That's it, that's the difference. And like I told you, leaf springs all along, but there's a difference, okay? You can get between seven, eight, nine leaf springs. Everywhere there's a leaf spring. So yes, the ride is obviously going to be atrocious. However, when it's loaded up, things will be better. There you can see the horn and exposed bits, of course, the Mahindra logo, the Bolero grill, and everything is halogen here on the lights front, but there's some chrome treatment there. Now there's this reflector. Why is there a reflector on the front? Because Mahindra knows the drivers are going to drive the wrong side at night so at least that reflector will help in being spotted provision for a fog light as well there's this gap here but the towing hook is right exposed at the front now it only gets one nozzle for the washer spray this is complete manual adjust exposed hinges says bolero city pickup and the tire size happens to be 215 75 15 no alloy wheels no wheel caps none of that of course Oh, there's a mud flap here. Meanwhile, there's a side footstep to climb on. Now, the reason I was telling you this is like a salesman is because it tells you everything. So it says 1.5T here, which is vehicle tons details, 1.5, which is 1500 kgs. It says power steering here because it also comes with a manual steering option because people are used to the manual steering, of course. Speed limit set to 80 kilometers per hour. That is also written. So almost every detail you want is already written. But the wheelbase is more than 3.2 meters. Yeah, almost 3.3 meters. Get that Mercedes E-Class long wheelbase. <laughs> okay, and the exhaust placement is right here. Can you see that? Yeah, on the side. So, take that G-Wagon. There you can see the exhaust going. And of course, leaf springs everywhere like I told you earlier. Now, this is a body on frame platform. But, you know, you can put in a lot of stuff. It can take up to 1500 kgs, which is obnoxiously crazy. And everything is basic at the rear as well. Brake light indicator. This is the reflector and this is for the reverse light. Parking sensors, what a revolution. Says Mahindra here. Now this is so that it's easier to open and close this. I mean, they have three of them. But to open it, all you have to do is pull it like this. I like this mechanism, which is very nicely done, very sophisticated. And there you can pull it down. And there you can load in as much stuff as you want. And this is the real USP of this vehicle. Not the driving capability or even the ride quality or the handling or the performance. It is largely how this vehicle is able to carry so much stuff. And that's the reason they also have a double cab variant which is known as the Bolero ZX Camper, something of that sort. They have a version for poultry, dumper truck, ambulance. I mean, they have so many variants of the Bolero for regular use and for, I mean, important stuff so that life can work very well. Exposed bits are in plenty, of course, has to be. Now, uh, here you can see this revolutionary feature wherein it pulls in air from here and pushes it out from here. So this is kind of the air conditioning of the vehicle. But you know what, the glove box is small and it doesn't shut on one go. So you have to like really push it. No AC vents because it doesn't have AC. And there's a handle to hold on to because body roll is in plenty. Now this one comes with a driver's seat and a longer co-passenger seat, but no one gets ahead. And there is good amount of visibility at the rear as long as you don't load long items. Otherwise, that won't be seen. Here you can see the indicator is functioning. So quite interesting a vehicle. Anyways, let's get inside. And here again, the salesman's job continues. Reverse gear to be engaged after keeping the clutch pedal pressed fully for three seconds. This is a first for me. Turbocharged engine run at idle speed for a minute after starting and before stopping. That's again a new for me. Headlight leveler here. Regen for the DPF. And here is another cubby hole to keep your stuff, but obviously it does not get AC. Here is where the fuel actually goes. The seat actually moves ahead and behind, which is revolutionary for the driver's seat. And this is where the handbrake has been put. There is no dead pedal here. 
and once you see from the side you realize there are a lot of exposed bits and panel gaps in this vehicle so manually you have to move the windows of course no audio system here this is for the hazard light of course nothing it's completely plain and basic there is a 12 volt charging socket which is a revolution of course now many people will be tempted to see three so one person here one is a driver and the second person will get his nuts massage when you get into second or fourth or into reverse okay when i get into reverse you can hear the parking sensors beep as well steering is huge has a sort of a different treatment right there the horn yeah it's very meek for a vehicle of this kind okay instrument cluster is very basic here the, i mean telltale lights will obviously come speedometer there's a fuel meter there is a temperature meter and there's an odometer and this button is very flimsy yeah so acche se dabao the twin trip meters also get revealed right there this is the control for the light adjustment this is for the wipers let's use the wipers hmm not bad ha huh? do a decent job this mirror is not adjustable at all i mean <laughs> it is not dimming at all okay you get sun visors which is nice headroom is actually quite decent but under thigh support is very poor like really very poor under thigh support seat belts don't move at all there is a light placement here that's about it it's such a basic cabin in fact when i turn off the car oh my god the piece but still some sound keeps coming that hissing sound i think from the air suspension anyways this is the key of the vehicle you have to manually open everything by the way i was just joking okay there's no air suspension here because some people would take it seriously and then be like mm, i want this car for becoming <laughs> a mercedes my bug gls 600 Okay, let's do one thing. Let's start the vehicle in there. It does not do any swipe up of sorts. No dead lock, clutch lock, anything of that sort. It just starts right away. And the you see dashboard design, a lot of hard plastics, some panels which are not properly fit. In fact, you can see panels are not properly fit here. There, you can arm say move it, put some stuff inside to like hide it, of course. <laughs> And that's about it. Let's start driving right away. All right, you're all set to go, which means turning on the vehicle. Oh my God, what a sound! And into first gear, handbrake is down. Yeah, the reason they put a handbrake in such a weird position now, so nobody does handbrake turns. In fact, check this out. Okay, I'm going to launch it aggressively here, revving the motor. Little bit of wheel spin on offer, and I'm in first gear at the red line at 30 kilometers per hour. Into second, gearing is super duper short. But some of the engine is refined. Right? It's not bad. It's loud. It's clattery, but it's not vibrating in that regard. So yes, I would say the engine is actually quite nice. This is actually a 2.5 liter M2 Dicor turbocharged four-cylinder diesel engine, which produces 75 horsepower. And in second gear, it's doing topping out at around 55 kilometers per hour. Between 50 to 60 is the green zone for best fuel efficiency, and the claimed one is 17.2 kilometers per liter. So. 75 horsepower, which comes in at 3,200 RPM. Torque output is 195 newton meters, between 1,400 to 2,200 RPM. Clutch is actually not very heavy; it's not very light either. And there's obviously a ton of body roll as well. Steering wheel is decent, yeah. It's not bad. I mean, it is vague, like okay. And when you're going center, na, the position is like little weird, just like the older car. But you know what? This is power steering, so it's very effortless. By the way, the manual steering does not have the wider seat. The power steering version only has the wider co-passenger seat, probably because uh, with power steering, since you're not making too much effort in steering, you can go and massage someone's nuts who's sitting in the middle. Or maybe, probably, without power steering, he would need to move your hand more. So there's no place in the center for another person. Although. This car doesn't have a seat belt buckle for the co-passenger, which is very weird and awkward. Like, why would they do that? Let's stop here, and you can see that nose dive under even slight braking. And let's go. So ground clearance is actually ample, but because of the length of the vehicle, you have to be a bit careful in maneuvering. And maneuverability is also not that bad with power steering, of course. Now the thing is, low end is nice, mid range is okay, okay, and there is no top end here at all because it. Kind of screams very fast in the top end, and the gearing is so short. And in the interest of fuel efficiency, I believe that uh, uh, yeah, when the they short gearing, you would shift to a higher gear faster. Probably that is the mentality. But gearing super duper short that you hit the red line so fast. Now there's another bolero here. Hi brother. Anyways, so there is no point pulling this engine unnecessarily in the top end because there's nothing to have there. The claim mileage 17.2 kilometers per liter and. The fuel tank capacity is 45 liters. Also on Mahindra's website, it says 62 liters or something of that sort. On Mahindra's website, it says 200 newton meters. I think from the website to the road, 5 newton meters is lost because the brochure which is lying in this car, there are plenty of them, says 195 newton meters. There in third gear, it is going to hit a speed of 
almost 80 kilometers per hour which means in fourth also it's going to hit a speed of 80 kilometers per hour and in fifth also it's going to hit a speed of 50 80 kilometers per hour because this car is restricted to 80 kilometers per hour period how easy is that okay you can feel that bouncy effect so ride quality is not very nice because obviously body on frame platform the lumpiness is there and leaf springs makes it even worse but once it's loaded up right becomes slightly better not like quite a bit better and i can't really comment because we are two really lightweight people in this car me and f2 right now steering has this slack in the center but then that's expected where this vehicle absolutely excels in is in the load hauling capability and then it's quite reliable as well because it's been on sale since donkey's years in fact uh, mahindra gives a warranty of 1 year or 3 lakh kilometers sorry 3 years or 1 lakh kilometers whichever is earlier which is actually decent enough i would say and then you feel that oh my goodness those leaf springs i hate you leaf springs they're like really bad and it's boiling inside i really feel bad for the people who are actually given this car to drive without air conditioning in this hot weather i know you can open the window and get some ventilation of course but the heat is insane at the moment so that's something you have to be really very careful about on is fine let's use the wiper so that some amount of water comes and cools the windshield which will at the end of the day make the cabin a little bit more cooler and then make me feel that i'm not boiling inside and all that bullshit doesn't really work as such <laughs> gearbox is kind of notchy throws a long so you have to really hunt for stuff but there's a bigger problem here and that problem happens when you're driving in the city because you can't go full throttle right so you have to modulate the accelerator pedal and that is where the issue is because the pedal placement is such that your foot is in such a position that it becomes very pain full unless and until you go full throttle you just feel that pain of driving this car on part throttle because of the positioning of the pedals which is extremely weird here the weight of this vehicle is 1745 kg which you can't really feel and the price of this vehicle is around 8 to 9 lakh rupees i'm not sure what exactly is the price but somewhere around that the multiple variants of course talking about multiple variants like i told you this is a single cab there's a double cab which is known as the bolero camper gold zx something of that sort there's a 4x4 option as well and then it also comes in cng so mahindra is like tumhe jo chahiye hum tumhe de dete in fact there's a cash van available like for atm usage uh, to transfer money which obviously has security and all that uh, windows and grill and stuff like that i think there's a dumper truck variant as well dumper variant of this vehicle so the sky is the limit in terms of what kind of a bolero pickup you can get and the rival of course happens to be the tata yodha which is the xenon's new name i guess so in terms of commercial applications fantastic but yeah commercial guys also deserve some amount of creature comforts like ac has become so basic in these days that i don't understand how can this vehicle without ac survive matlab bahut hi zyada garmi it's like boiling hot so now since we are at a red signal and the countdown is on traction control off launch control on into race mode into first gear revving the motor and launch control active off we go oh my god wheel spin oh my god box down so fast before you know it you're done <laughs> Okay, come on. I thought you guys want to hear the engine. Now I realize you don't want to hear the engine because the engine is so loud and then you have hit the limiter. So might as well get into fifth. So this car does 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in never seconds because it's limited to 80 kilometers per hour. So it never reaches that speed only. and it has been restricted because most commercial vehicles are restricted even that uber cab you go in i think is restricted to 80 kilometers per hour which is kind of less considering some of the roads and highways have a speed limit of 100 and 120 kilometers per hour as well and soon i think 140 kilometers per hour would also become the norm so at least come on don't restrict the car like this you guys are worried about that speed alarm which happens at 80 kilometers per hour imagine the person who is driving this he doesn't have a speed alarm he has a speed breaker not a breaker a wall it just stops going beyond 80 km per hour like is there an issue is the fuel not pumping in what is happening but hey this is limited like crazy or if you want to save money now you can get one of those is gold cng and off we go oh my god wheel spin ha huh? so there's also poultry van version of this and a water tanker version too mahindra is like whatever application you want okay i think that's a poultry van version whatever version you want we will make one for you <laughs> So that's how Mahindra has played it smart by making a Bolero a workhorse, and this is an absolute workhorse of sorts. Now I'm complaining about the performance, uh, the vibrations, like you, you can feel that the ride and all that stuff. But you know that's from an enthusiastic point of view. But honestly, in terms of this vehicle providing livelihood to so many people, I must applaud Mr. Mahindra for making such a vehicle 
which is not only helping people earn a living but you know what the reason why you get your vegetables on time i'm not talking about the vegetables which i was talking about when i was moving this gali bar earlier on the video but your vegetables your commodities the various stuff is also because of this vehicle performing its duties so we should applaud it thank you so much mr anand mahindra i really appreciate that you made a vehicle which makes life easier for a lot of us and also at the end of the day it obviously गिव्स एम्प्लॉयमेंट टू अलॉट मोर पीपल एज वेल बट यू नो वॉट थोड़ा इंप्रूवमेंट कर दो यार इजी वे से डाल दो यार गर्मी बहुत ज्यादा हो रही है एंड प्लस लिटिल बिट प्लेसमेंट ऑफ पेडल्स कुड भी इंप्रूव कंसिडरिंग एक्स यू वी सेवन डब्लू सो रेवल्यूशनरी विद एडास एंड ऑल दैट वो सब मत डालो बट एटलीस्ट थोड़े बहुत तो कम्फर्ट वम्फर्ट डाल ही दो इस कार में सो यू गो नो डाउन शिफ्ट टू थर्ड नॉट दैट इट्स गोन टू मेक एनी डिफरेंस वॉट्स एवर सो गैस लाइक दिस वॉक मेक शूट गिफ्ट था दट द लाइक बटन ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू चैनल आई डिट टॉक बॉडी रोड बिकॉज यू नो नाइ फाइ टर्न इट अराउंड आई डिट बी And I'm not carrying anything now, but the person who's carrying a lot of stuff in the loading bay could be at a major loss if he turns around. So I don't want to give that wrong vibe that you know what, drive it aggressively because you shouldn't. At least not this vehicle because it's not meant for this. It's meant for something else. Bye bye. Arey arey arey. Oh my God, roll over. Am I getting it?